the context uh, through which I am here is we have recently made an investment in in uh, one of the uh, media companies, based Koiti Media Company. Uh, they are involved in developing content for children, and and the reason we decided to make that investment was was primarily based on the limited the, that sector in this region is not at all that developed. What investment in making investment in media and content development companies is a very challenging task uh, because unlike you, the the regular the the traditional investment field, this sort of investment requires a lot of in-depth analysis about how you see this property, this content developing in the future. So when we looked at this opportunity, and I'm sure in, at around 4 o'clock you will see the company that I'm talking about is the Tashkil, the 99. We have recently concluded our investment. But, but when we look at it, any investment, what we look at four to five major categories, especially in media. Number one is like how unique the concept is. Uh, there are a lot of media content available. Uh, but there are a lot of Ben 10s around, but there is only one Ben 10 that is successful. Uh, what we also see is that how global that concept is. Uh, is it expandable? Is it scalable? And thirdly, what sort of validation this sort of concept have received, uh, both in the region and across the borders? And obviously, finally, not but the least, the quality, the talent of the management. So when we evaluated uh, Tishkil, for example, uh, we have been evaluating it for, for some time. We have been following the company's progress. Uh, what, we, what we notice that the, the concept is extremely unique. It is, uh, the concept is global, however, it, it has its roots in the region. So it, can, it not only covers the regional Middle Eastern market, but it expands beyond that. So that was one very important uh, characteristic that we look because we are talking about regional stories, regional champions going uh, global. The second about the scalability of the concept. What are the monetization abilities that we see in this brand? So like this, the concept is as such unique that it can be monetized through the print media, it can be monetized through the new, new uh, economy media, it can be monetized through mobile, mobile space. So we thought that this this has multiple monetization abilities, and that, that basically de-risk our investment to an extent. Thirdly, the, the validation. This, this particular firm has been the, the partner that it's working with, with for example, the Endemols of this world, which is the largest distributor uh, of content in the world, and then, and then Cartoon Network having an alliance with this company. So that provided us the validation that, okay, this concept has the legs to go and become global. And finally, Knife. Knife is a quite passionate sort of a, uh, entrepreneur. He has been developing this brand over the last eight years. He started with a single concept. Now it has become a global brand with global acceptance, uh, with, 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 with media coverage from all the you know, leading media magazines to, uh, uh, to the, uh, and it basically uh, like news weeks of this world. So that was the initial investment thesis that allowed us to invest in this venture. Thank you, Farhan. So we're, we're talking about a few characteristics. In other words, an, an animation concept from a valuation perspective, does it have potential, which is pan-regional platform as opposed to national, number one? Number two, does it have a figurehead and a founder with a very clearly defined vision? Uh, number three, does it have clear routes to market in terms of its distribution potential? And we're seeing a story developing from Farhan which is quite different, perhaps, to some of the themes that we saw earlier around country-specific content. So whilst we can say that certain types of animation work in certain country situations because they're rooted in the culture of that country, from an investment perspective, there's probably a different view, which is that you wouldn't necessarily, as an investor, invest in a property which is only relevant to a particular country or a particular circumstance. You're looking for concept, which is universal in theme, is um, transportable both regionally and internationally, and has a very clearly defined distribution and platform structure. So I'll, I'll evolve that question and those themes a little bit and ask Farhan. Um, I'll just add something yeah, to what you said. Uh, I think one another important uh, 
uh, element in any successful form is its ability to change its course. Uh, the skill where it is right now, it's not because uh, it started at, from this uh, spot. It started as a company that was creating content and delivering through print media. But that strategy in the long run, long run, it's not something that can be monetizable. So the company altered strategy, went into creating these 26 episodes, and now it's, and based on those 26 episodes, it's able to get traction not only in the, in the broadcasting world, but also at the investor community. So you need to be able to alter and navigate your strategy based on what's happening around you. And, and, keep, and Knife, I think, has this ability to navigate and change and alter strategy. Sure. And in terms of the earlier conversation around channels and platforms, I guess your view is to a large extent to focus primarily on broadcast television. Is that true? True. Uh, at this st stage, yes, because what we see, uh, the end game for any property is, is a blockbuster merchandising deal. You get from Hasbro, you get from Nitel. That is the end game. These animations are infomercials, apparently. They, they allow the company to get audience, they allow the company to have children's imagination, and then once you achieve that mass, you have to monetize it through the merchandising strategy, and that's the end game of every IP, IP content related company. In, these are all infomercial, these, these are used as, as to get audience, get traction in that particular market. Okay, so just to, just to digress slightly, what, how do you see the animation space particularly as, as a particular segment within content? Look, I think animation space, uh, it's probably the most uh, global sort of, if you divide the media place, it has content, it has the production, and then finally the delivery. I think the production part, which includes the animation, is quite crowded. And on the other hand, on one hand, you have like big institutions like Walt Disney, financing their own animation studios. On the other hand, they are independent uh, one-man uh, animation houses. These, these single uh, owner or two, three person uh, independent animation houses are, have struggled recently because of the lack of funding. Uh, the, the, and especially the recent recession has dried up and we dried up the funding for this. The, the, the good thing that has happened the advent of internet and mobile has basically disrupted the major channels like broadcasting. Now the, the content creators can directly go and, 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 and market their content and monetize it in the future. So that's what where we see uh, the industry is going. But for this, for Shkiel in particular, because it has to get the traction of a wider audience, you cannot still ignore the TV, at least in this part of the world. Uh, so you, so the Shkiel will continue to penetrate itself, its brand through broadcasting. However, the second, the, the, the channel, the mobile, the internet will remain a very important cog of its overall strategy. See, so the animation, one thing, uh, as I told you, I, I think I just want to add one more point on the animation side is that it has to be relevant. The content that has to be created has, you have to decide early on which target market you are targeting. Is it like local or is it a regional flavor? Sure. So like you have to pick up uh, values which are universal in nature so that you can monetize at a, at a global level. So that's, that's what appeals to an investor so that it has a larger target market so that whenever the merchandising deal is struck by this company, it will have a big bang on this top line. And eventually we all, after, we all are after the cash flow at the end. This is the company, sh the, the IP is good, but it should be monetizable. Yeah, and let's just talk in fact about that for a second, which is valuation of IP. So how does, how does an animation company, or how does an investor take a view as to uh, creating um, a, a, a defined valuation around the intellectual property? I think valuing IP and content uh, uh, creating companies is extremely difficult. It's, it's more an art than a science. However, the three, four uh, major approaches that you see is basically the single most that every a uh, buyer would like to use is the cost plus. So basically you have spent about 200,000, I'm gonna buy your company for 210. That is the simplest way. The, 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 the more advanced is the income approach where, where the buyer extrapolate the value of the brand based on its monetization capability going forward three to five years. 
So that is where you really, that is where the concept of whether it's a local concept, regional concept, or a global concept, that determines the value of the brand. And third is like what you say, the uh, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. So if you believe that the, the buyer is willing to buy your company at a certain level, that's the price. But income approach is normally used for companies which have past year startup stage. They are in the third or fourth year. They see their brand has received some recognition, and now they want to sell and they want to monetize. Sure. And in terms of you know looking at a, a deal like the Schiel and choosing that one above any other and looking at some of the global parallels in terms of valuation of animation. What are the, what are the common characteristics of a valuable IP within animation? I think valuing IP, as I told you, is quite challenging. So Marvel has more than 5,000 characters. Uh, when it was acquired by Disney, it, it paid about $4.1 billion. So, it's, so you, can, you can have 4.1 divided by 5,000 character and you get the valuation per character. But yeah. there is no hard and fast rule. Overall, an exit on a medium-sized company, you're talking about a company is exiting at about 13, 14 times its eventual EBITDA. So it's quite a lucrative, high-demanded uh, sector if, if you have the right IP and property in your portfolio. And, and again, it's investing in, in IP or it's a portfolio concept, as somebody was saying earlier, yeah. right? You, there are, you, you create 1,000 movies and then you get one Titanic, right? So you need to be uh, the, the, uh, the investors. There are certain dedicated funds who are focused entirely on the IP and media-related uh, investments. So they have a more uh, diversified view. They can, they can have some startups in their portfolio. They can have some late stage, or early stage uh, IPs, which they believe can become big. And there are funds like Riada, which is SME, which invests in companies which have at least three to four years of operating history. And so that's the difference based on, like, invest, you, you will have different investors for different kind of risk appetite.